Hi, Steve Gale here. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at uh, LoRa and uh, the PyCom Loppy and um, Mac layer connections using LoRa from a client to a server. So um, we've got a, first of all, we'll look at the uh, LoRa client code and uh, then we'll follow on to the uh, lower uh, server code. So the, the basic situation is we've got a, um, we've got a, a loppy with a LoRa interface and um, what it's doing is it's, it's measuring uh, temperature and humidity from the PySense board and um, it's then taking those measurements, packaging them up and uh, sending them via a LoRa radio link to, uh, to a LoRa gateway um, that LoRa gateway is receiving the, um, the information from the client. It's um, extracting the um, measured values from the, from the uh, packet received from the client, reformatting those, and then uploading those to a um, uh, MySQL server using PHP and HTTP POST. Okay, so um, we, we'll have a look at the, um, the client software first. So I'll just... Um, maximize the uh, client software and um, here we the client code so here we're using um, visual studio code and uh, we've got uh, two files of, of that are worth looking at we've got the uh, the bootbot pie um, which doesn't isn't really doing very much it's just uh, setting up the um, the the UART for logging and uh, they're calling the main.py and we've got the, the main.py. Also in the library, we've got the, um, we're using the PySense libraries because we're measuring temperature and humidity from the, um, from the PySense board. Okay, so if we go back to uh, main.py, um, we need to import a few uh, libraries. So we've got the import OS, we need to import socket because we need to create a lower socket, uh, importing time, importing struct and struct is being used to uh, format up the um, the, um, the message packet which is sent from the client to the server and also to uh, deconstruct the uh, receive packet from the server back to the client and we also import machine um, because we're using the um, PySense temperature and humidity sensors we need to um, import from the PySense library and more specifically the um, the uh, I2C device on the PySense which is um, which is actually measuring the um, temperature and humidity values. Also from uh, network we're going to import uh, LoRa, the LoRa class which is used for our, um, our LoRa client. So um, because we're using Mac layer connection in LoRa we uh, need to specify some sort of uh, packet format that we're going to use and we're just using a basic packet format which is from one of the examples um, that was published uh, through the um, PyCom documentation. And um, so this, this, this here defines the, um, the uh, packet format. So we've got here byte, byte and then a number and then a string. Now that number refers to the size of the string. So what dynamically what happens is that the the, um, the size of the string will be specified here so that we'll have byte byte and 10s or 12s or 20s or whatever the size of the string is that we're actually using. And this is the basic this is the um, basic package header information here. Okay, so that's how that's how the data that's transferred uh, to the client. But um, what we get back, for, sorry, to the server, but uh, what we get back from the server is acknowledgement. And um, this is our acknowledgement packet format. So we've got three bytes, B, B, B. So we've got three bytes that we're receiving in the acknowledgement packet format. One byte for the device ID, one byte for the, um, the packet size, and uh, one byte for um, the acknowledgement OK, which is just 200, which is typically, you know, sort of 200 comes back from a HTTP server if everything's OK. So that's a value we're using. So I probably didn't mention here that we've got one byte here for the device ID, one byte for the um, the packet size, and then as many bytes as are required to uh, house the um, the string which is being sent up. Okay, so the next thing we do is we're going to set up the um, the uh, the PySense. So we've got to create an instance of the um, the PySense class, and um, then we've got to create an instance of the um, the SI device, which is associated with the um, the PySense sensor, so that's actually the uh, the sensor, and um, then we'll be able to uh, call methods on that um, sensor object to uh, read the temperature and read the humidity. 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a Laura socket. And um, when we do this, there's a couple of things that we need to consider. Um, where the mode that we're using, and this is the um, this is the um, what opens up the Laura socket. It's creating an instance of a Laura class first of all. So when we create an instance of the um, the Laura class, so the Laura object, which is this is our Laura object here, then we've got to set up um, tell it what sort of uh, Laura connection we're using. So the mode is Laura Laura, which is um, Mac layer or um, basic physical layer Laura with no higher level layers being um, specified. No, it's not LoRa WAN. It's just LoRa. It's LoRa. It's a LoRa Mac connection. And we need to spec. We don't need to specify the frequency. But if you um, if you're not wanting to use the default frequency, then you need to specify the frequency. And because we're in Australia, um, the frequency bar that we've been allocated is um, uh, 916 megahertz. So we specify that. And we're using TXIQ equals true. Now, the reason we're using TXIQ equals true is that we're going to use um, separate encoding for the transmit and the receive so that they don't, they don't um, impinge on each other. So um, we're specifying TXIQ equals true here. So then what we're going to do is create a socket. And um, we're going to, it's a LoRa socket. And uh, we're using raw mode, socket raw. And this is our LoRa socket. So we're going to set blocking to false. So there's no blocking associated with this um, socket connection. And um, then for um, if you go back to the um, package format up here, we said we had uh, one byte for the uh, device ID. So that's our first byte, our first byte in our packet format. So because we're going to want to support multiple devices, rather than hard coding into each device, what the uh, device ID is. Another alternative, which uh, we're using here, is to um, use the MAC address. So we've got a LoRa MAC, and we can call LoRa.MAC um, and um, retrieve the, um, the MAC address of the, um, the LoRa interface, but that's eight bytes. So, and because we're only sending, um, what we've only allocated one byte in our package format for um, ID, um, then what, what we're doing here is we're just going to use the last byte, MAC address 7, and uh, hope that um, we don't have too many devices with the same last byte matching as and use that as our device address. So this is our measurement loop. So we've got while true, so it's going to go forever. And the first thing we're going to do is read our sensors. So we call SI. You remember SI up here was our, um, our uh, PySense um, sensor object. So we're going to call si.temperature and uh, that'll retrieve us our temp value. So that's our temperature value. Then we're going to call um, si.humidity and we'll retrieve that in our humidity value. And uh, then what we're going to do is construct the string that we're going to send as part of the message from the client to the server. And what we're doing here is we're just using really basic JSON. We're trying to keep it as lean as we can, but use JSON because it's pretty much a standard. Um, you don't really need to do this because if the server's knowing um, the format of the data coming up and which byte is associated or which bytes are associated with which, um, which uh, parameter, then you don't necessarily need to use JSON. But I just choose to use JSON because um, it's not very costly here. You can see the format we're using. We're just using H for humidity. And we're using floating point, but um, we're limiting it to uh, two decimal places. So we're sort of, you know, just uh, keeping, it, keeping it relatively short and sweet. And here's our temperature. And again, two decimal places on the temperature. So then we pass in a humidity value, which will go into this one and a temperature value, which will go into this one. And that'll give us a uh, formatted string that looks something like what you can see down here. This is real time. This is actually um, um, being sent to the, um, the gateway. OK, so if you, if you wanted to, because the thing with LoRa is that um, the less bytes you send, the faster you can send them. And the more airspace there are for other devices to, um, to send, send and receive data on the same channel. So by minimising the amount of data that's being transferred, then um, you can obviously either support more devices, more client devices, or alternatively, you could um, transmit at a faster data rate. So what you could do is just, just change these to decimal rather than floats, um, reduce the data size, maybe scale them up. 
um, and then get rid of the JSON string and just just basically send out the bytes. So that could um, you know improve the efficiency of this. But um, this is just an example. So so we're going to print out the content string, and you can see the content string being printed out here with some values. We've got humidity value here, temperature value 33. Um, it's not quite that warm, but it's pretty warm here at the moment um, um, in January in um, in Torquay. Um, so um, we've got um, we're going to set um, our content string here as the message that we're going to send. Now what we're going to do is we're going to package up the um, the LoRa packet um, based on the LoRa package format, which is um, not the ACK one, but this one. So we've got uh, a byte for our device ID, the first one. We've got a byte for our package size, and then we've got our string. So let's have a look how we do that. So what we're doing is we're using structure.pack and we're specifying the package format, uh, followed by the, um, the length of the message. And um, so the length of the message will go into, oh, how's this working? Oh, sorry. Laura package format and um, the length of the message. Then into that, we've got uh, device ID, device address, sorry, which goes into the, um, that's how it works. Device address goes into the first first bit, first byte. Um, the length of the message goes into the next byte. Then we've got the, um, the message itself, which is our string, which goes into this one here. And this bit here, the length of the message, this part here replaces the percent %d. So the length of the message will be, if they say the length of the message was, so how many bytes is it? Roughly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 26, 27, 28, 29. So 29 bytes, roughly 30 bytes. So the length of the message 30 or 29 will go into this percent D value and be in front of the S. So um, that'll dynamically change that LoRa packet, packet format to um, be uh, 29S. So device address, length of the message and the message. And using the socket, LoRa sock, which was the um, socket we created up here, uh, we're going to send the, send the whole package. So this struct pack is quite useful because it allows us to pack up in bytes the, um, the format that we're sending. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wait for a response from the gateway. And um, so we're going to, we're going to um, a couple of things we need to do is we need to um, set a variable waiting acknowledge. So we're waiting for the acknowledge. And um, also we're going to use a receive timeout because if we, don't get a, if we don't get an acknowledge packet coming back, then something's gone wrong and we don't want to sit there forever waiting for an acknowledge packet if, if nothing's coming back. So basically what I've done is I've implemented a timeout of 20 seconds and um, if it hasn't got an act by 20 seconds, it'll just drop out and it'll um, start again. So in our while loop, we're going to while, while, while we're waiting for waiting act and also receive time out as less than 20, then um, what we're going to do is we're going to call Laura sock receive and we're allocating 256 bytes for the receive buffer. And because the maximum protocol size is 255, then there's no there's no need to allocate any more space to the um, to the receive buffer. So that's um, what we're going to do. Uh, Laura sock receive will return um, the buffer. In this case, is receive acknowledge. And what we're going to do is, when we call that, we're going to increment our receive timeout. Okay, so we've got 20 goes, 20 seconds. Now, the next thing we need to do is just because we've received something doesn't mean that it's necessarily valid. So we're going to have a look at the, the length of the receive acknowledge packet and make sure that it's greater than zero. So that means we've actually received something. Hopefully it's right, but it may not be correct. So what we're going to attempt to do is we're going to attempt to unpack it, structure unpack. And um, we want to we unpack it as the um, 
in the ACK format because we were receiving the acknowledgement. The ACK format was going back here three bytes, one byte for the device ID, one byte for the package size, and one byte which is our hopefully our OK or otherwise. So three bytes. So we've got, um, where are we? We're down here. So we're going to unpack the receive ACK buffer into that format and we're going to get a device ID, a package length, and our acknowledge. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the, if the receive device ID is the same as our device address, which remember is the, um, the last byte of our uh, MAC address. So if the gateway has responded with an ACK packet that has the same device ID, in other words, it's for us, then we know at this point, well, let's put the comment in, we know at this point um, if uh, true packet ACK or ACK packet is, oh, we know what we mean, is for this device. Yep. If it's not, then it was meant for another device and this device has received it, so it just needs to, um, to ignore it. So then we go and have a look was the acknowledgement value 200? In other words, is everything okay? And if it was 200, then we're all good. So we'll print ACK and we're also printing the device ID. And you can see here that what we're getting back here is an ACK 140. And 140 is the device ID for the device that's currently um, connected to this um, laptop and is communicating with the, um, the gateway. Um, if, the, if the device ID wasn't matching the device address, then we had some sort of message file. We'll just print out message failed. Probably the better thing to do would be to actually print the device ID that was received. Actually, I might make that change. Um, let's, um, let's copy that because that makes more sense. And I'll just save that because that's um, actually a good improvement. So it tells us what device ID message failed and what device ID we actually received from. Okay, but it wasn't, it obviously wasn't, um, oh no, it was the device ID that equals the device address because that's in the if. So that's pointless, isn't it? So I'll get rid of that. <laughs> I'll take that back out. Um, doesn't make match my own logic um, and also on there we could actually print we could actually print out the um, the acknowledgement that we received for another one but we, we don't worry about that okay so then um, what we're going to do is we're just going to sleep for one second um, and this is within the while loop as you can see so this is sitting inside our while loop so this is our one second delay for our loop timeout because remember our receive timeout is 20 so if we're waiting for ACK in the receive timeout and we're not getting any acknowledgement, okay, then it's going to keep looping around here 20 times and then once it gets a receive timeout of 20, it's going to um, bump out of this while loop and um, then it'll sleep for a while and it'll go back again and start again. Now, I've got sleep 10 here, but um, realistically, if you've got multiple devices, you probably want to change this to a random time so that they're not communicating all exactly at the same time because if you've got two that are constantly in sync and colliding then it's going to create a bit of problem whereas if you can imagine a bit of a random back off a bit like the um the um layer one ethernet protocol which has um random back off um then uh, hopefully you don't continually get getting collisions at that um at that mac layer um so that a random that would be an improvement would be to change that to um around and back off. And um, that's basically the, um, the client code.